Larry, I couldn't help but notice you staring at my shoes. Mm -hmm. I wear them because I rescue abandoned gibbon monkeys. It's interesting that you took the chair. Thank you. Well, it's not uh, good or bad, it's just information. Many times in a polyamorous relationship, the more dominant member will individuate and set himself apart from the other two lovers. No, um, no, 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 that's not what's happening. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> we just work together. And when we're friends, that's it. Well, whether yeah. uh, Larry is having sex with both of you in a dominant way. No, he's uh, not. <laughs> but it seems like something sexual is going on. I'm definitely picking up on a sexual energy. We're not. So. We're a writing team. Well, again, whether it's sexual, whether you want it to be sexual, it doesn't matter. All relationships are essentially built on open, honest communication, just like a marriage or a menage a trois. Now, Rachel, on the phone, uh, you said that you were having trouble working together on your show. What show is that? The Fartlemans. It's a cartoon. I know The Fartlemans. It's one of my favorite shows. Oh, wow. How old are your kids? Oh, I don't have children. Now, Rachel, you mentioned uh, that the issue seemed to be one of trust. That's what you said, trust? It's boundary issues. <laughs> Dr. Kane. I'm not a doctor. Mr. Kane, I did something very innocent. <laughs> And then these guys, they attacked me for it. Because you did something monstrously stupid. That's the attack right there. It's the, the name calling, which is completely unnecessary. And everyone just needs to back off. Who is everyone? Them. Rachel and Hugh. Rachel and Hugh. Great. We've defined that.